Recording started. The recording started, but I haven't got a go live button. Maybe it's maybe it is live. OK, yep. well, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully somebody will be able to see this when we finish. So, um, so. <laughs> hello, it's Anne Marsh here from Viewed in Cornwall, and I'd like to welcome Joanna Jackson, also from Viewed in Cornwall. Um, welcome, Hi. Joanna, and thank you ever so much for agreeing to do this. I must just tell you all, uh, I only met Joanna in person today. We were um, standing together at a warmth and a winter warmth and wellness fair. And uh, this morning, the person that I should have been interviewing let me know that she had COVID and was really very poorly. So I really, really, really do appreciate Joanna <laughs> you standing in. Thank you. And it was great to get to know you and Anthony. Yeah, no, it's been good fun today. Good fun. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so, Joanna, um, <laughs> being a bookie, I have actually purchased all of your books. Um, you did, indeed. So, Thank you. Uh, I can't <laughs> wait. I can't wait to read them all. But anyway, uh, let's get back to you. Could you, I mean, I'm really interested. You, you, you actually started quite late to write. So I did. Tell us, tell us about your journey. What 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 inspired you? Um, well, it was um, I, I I hadn't always wanted to be a writer, um, but um, it's something I'd considered quite a few years ago, and it didn't really work out. Um, I did sit down at a laptop and tried to write something, and it just wasn't really going well. Um, and it was in actually in 2015, and that I first started or I started my first book. I actually started out with the intention to write a short story for a magazine, um, but the story got longer and longer and longer. And <laughs> so I thought, oh, well, maybe, maybe it could be a book. And um, and so that's how it started, really. Um, I knew that I wanted the first story to be about a girl and a group of her friends, a bit like a blend of Sex in the City meets Bridget Jones Diary kind of thing. <laughs> right. Um, you know, that's that was in my head um, when I started. So that was kind of how I started out. And um, I didn't um, I didn't have, you know, the beginning, the middle and the end plot all figured out. I didn't actually know where the story was going to go. I knew how I wanted to start it and I just started typing. And I always describe it as if um, it was like the words were dripping off my fingertips as I was typing. I literally wow. didn't know what the next sentence was going to be. So there we are. That, that uh, was the which, which book was your first? The uh, first one was Love Twists as Life Turns, which is the blue cover. Um, so um, this one, yeah, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> yeah, here's one I made. Here's one I bought earlier. Yeah, right. I should be reading that one first. And and um, so so it dripped off your finger fingertips. Oh. Then what? How, what? Had had you already got a publisher or what? Um, how, how did what what happened next? Well, um, I did send it away to a publisher, but um, it took quite a long time for them to reply. And at the time, because obviously I was very green and didn't know how all of this worked, and and I was I thought that I shouldn't send it to more than one publisher at a time. Um, right. So and because they took so long to reply, I just thought, Do you know what, I haven't got enough life left to wait for a publisher to get back to me and accept it because I, I was expecting to get you know hundreds of no's before I got a yes. So I actually oh. went ahead and self-published. <laughs> Right. Um, I did quite a lot of research um, before I did that. And I actually found that there are quite a few published authors that um, that are now self-publishing. Um, so, yeah, right. I just thought, well, I'll, I'll give it a go and see what happens. Mm. So there we are. Yeah, that's yeah. number one. <laughs> that's interesting because you don't think about authors, you know, more established authors self self publish publishing why do you think that is um from the research that i did um it was a lot of it was actually due uh, due to them being able to have more control over things like the cover design yes. um the type of font that they wanted to use um the launch date and things like that but also um 
the royalty payments on books is extremely low, as you will know yourself from being an author. Yes, um, yeah, so, I, I have to say, yes, that was a bit of a shock. Yeah, yeah, it, it is quite a shock, actually. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that they see the price of a book on the shelf and think, oh, wow, the author must be really rich. But it's really not the case. <laughs> no, no. Well, I suppose if, if you're Barbara Bradford Taylor or, yes. you know, <laughs> Catherine Coxon, yes. Yeah, it probably no, is. No. Yeah. Yeah, um, it, and, it, and some of it is down to the um, the way that the book's printed. So if you yes. are a famous author like that, um, they, then they print thousands and thousands of copies yeah. straight off because they know that they're going to sell. But obviously with new authors um, and when you self-publish, um, then the public, they're, they're sort of done on a print-on-demand basis. So the, mm. um, the cost of actually producing the book is really high. And therefore, the royalties are very low. Yeah. Um, but with established authors, they so they can actually earn more in royalties if they self-publish, because they've already right. got the market, um, and and they're already known and established. They know that they're going to be able to sell lots and lots of books. So for them, it's um, I would say, you know, it's probably a lower risk in terms of you know the outlay of self-publishing. Yeah, because yeah. they know they, they've got an audience already. Yeah, yeah, so. obviously, yes, yeah. So uh, do tell us, how did your first print run go with your first book? Uh, my first book, uh, that went really well, actually. Um, I was lucky I was working at the time still. Um, and uh, I, I was very lucky because a lot of my colleagues supported me and, and bought the first book. And, um, you know, they, they were just great, really. And I got some great reviews. Good. So, um, yeah, that, that that was kind of how it kicked off. But there's lots. The thing with self-publishing is that you have to do lots and lots of marketing um, yes. to get the awareness out there. So thank goodness for social media. Um, I know. <laughs> because it's free. <laughs> yes. Um, because the outlay. That, you know, they might be watching and start charging us. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah that that's the thing it's raising the awareness really and obviously uh when your readers do reviews for you that makes a huge difference because it triggers more interest um and so it's just about getting yourself out on different platforms and um trying to raise the awareness of your books yeah 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 now i've got to bring you to this book Oh, Emily's journey. Yeah, Emily's journey. Now, one. this, this, I, I'm really looking forward to this one because uh, I use the the Bude Post Office, the uh, Crescent uh, Post Office in Bude. Yeah, and 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 like like all the staff there, they're so helpful. They're so brilliant, oh, they're and fabulous. I believe that this was inspired by Mike, the owner at Crescent Stores. Uh, was it his granddad, did you say? Yeah, his grandfather's um, story. I, I was chatting with Mike one day and um, we were just talking about his grandfather and how the shop had started and, you know, a bit of family history. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I might knew that I, I was writing a book. I'd already started Amelie's Journey at that point. But the story, his grandfather's story really intrigued me. And so, and Mike was keen for me to, you know, use the story in in a yeah. book um he wanted to be in it himself of course <laughs> um so um you know which is quite funny um yeah. so that's that's kind of how it all started and and so i've used um some of the things that he did in his lifetime i used to inspire the storyline it's yeah. not his life story no, no there's lots no. of things in there that the family would recognize and think, oh yeah, he did that, and yeah, that happened, and you know, so um, yeah, that that was kind of how how it evolved. Really, I wanted to do something that was uh, also connected to Bude because I yes. you know I live here now, um, and the early sort of nineteen hundreds uh, attracted me because I also wanted to include Titanic and yeah, the wars. Brilliant! The Don't tell me anymore. Don't tell me That's anymore. It. No more spoilers. <laughs> No more spoilers. So if if you were to be giving advice to any anybody who's thinking about perhaps writing a book, what what three tips would you give them? 
three tips. Um, I would say don't don't be put off by thinking that you must have this beginning, middle, and end, um, you know, or thinking that you've got to have the plot all worked out before you actually start writing. Because for me, as I explained before, um, I didn't know what the next sentence was going to be until I start put my fingers onto the keyboard and it just kind of grew from there. So definitely I would say that's that's a good you know starting point. Um the other the other starting point is um to do or the other tip rather is to do with um editing. So obviously um the book has to be edited like a million times until you get to the point where you think I do not want to read this story again. Um, <laughs> Because you do you have to read it so many times. I remember that. My, thank yeah. goodness, mine wasn't <laughs> uh, mine wasn't fiction. Uh, but yeah, oh yes, that yeah. constant to and fro thing. And oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, so it's edit, edit, edit. Um, but a, a really good tip um, that uh, the publishing company that I used uh, gave to me was to when you get to the point where you think that the book is ready to go to the publisher change the font and then read it out loud because what happens oh. is when you when you your brain is reading the same font all the time you read things that are supposed to be there but are not there or exactly. you've got two words transposed and your brain reads it as if it's in the right order um so if you change the font and then read it out loud it kind of tricks the brain really and thinks, oh, this is something new. Um, and it's amazing how many more edits you will find and changes that you will make just by that doing that. That is so interesting. I mean, it's a really valuable tip. <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever I've done, I remember way back uh, a few years um, when I was doing my dissertation, I felt compelled, I didn't change the font or anything, I don't think you could in those days, but anyway, I felt compelled to read it out loud and everything I've written, um, papers for all sorts of things, I, I wrote a sex education policy once and I, I felt that I needed to read it out so yes. that you actually hear what you've written. So that's yeah. really interesting. I'd never thought about changing the font though. So, it really uh, does brilliant. make a huge difference. Yeah. 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 And that's, the third yeah. tip, I suppose, um, I would say is that it's not when you decide to write a book, um, what you have to come to realize, and this this is the case whether you self publish or even if you are published with a, with a traditional company. Yeah. And that is that um, you have to raise the awareness of your books. Um, so there's a lot of marketing involved. Yeah. Um, and it is, you know, a lot of authors, um, like myself, I'm not a marketer, but it's something that I've had to learn to do in different ways. Um, yeah. So, but I wouldn't say don't let that scare you off because, as I said, social media is a really great tool. Plus, you can do little videos like this. Um, yes. and people love listening to videos, so yeah. that's always a bonus. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just just to be aware, really, that the um, there is an element of marketing that you will have to do as an author, even if you're with a traditional publishing house. Yeah, Joanna, I, I could stay forever, but we've both had long days, and I, and I know what people are like; they don't want to watch reams and reams. But thank you so very much oh, for, very for awesome. coming on and, and, and talking with me, and I I truly cannot wait to start. Uh, reading your four books um, well, I hope you enjoy them I know I, I'm, I've got to read this one first definitely because it's set in our hometown yeah um, and I haven't even asked you about uh, your wise owl or uh, sorry wise owl oracle cards which I've also bought so who knows maybe we'll have to have another interview Oh, that will be good. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. so I will I will pop your contact details in the comments so that if anyone wants to get in touch with you, they can. Is that okay? Yeah, they can email me um, or there's my website as well. Um, yeah, I'll put both those in. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely Fantastic. fine. So, yeah, okay. well, I hope you enjoy the books. And it was lovely meeting you today. It was lovely to And I'm sure... I mean, what are you, two miles away from me? I don't think Probably we're, we're going to be that. strangers. <laughs> yeah.
Prosecco <laughs> next time. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds good. <laughs> Thank you so much. And um, well, yeah, we'll be in touch. Okay, then, Anne, you take care of yourself. Oh, okay. Thank you. Bye.